The latest study we have from Public Health England is that COVID infections among children are triggered by changes in the community rate. The study also says that the wider impact of school closures on children's development would be significant. I'm quite clear that we must continue to do all we can to keep children in school. Taking all these factors into account means that we have had to make a number of changes for the new term in order to help with breaking chains of transmission and to assist with keeping all of our children uh, and our education settings as safe as we can. The fact that we have managed to do this so successfully throughout the entire pandemic is due to the incredible dedication of all our teachers, leaders and support staff. And I know that the House will join me once more in thanking them for everything that they continue to do to keep children learning as safely as possible. Accordingly, we'll be opening the majority of primary schools as planned on Monday the 4th of January. We know how vitally important it is for younger children to be in school for their education, well-being and wider development. In a small number of areas where the infection rates are highest, we will implement our existing contingency framework, such as only vulnerable children and children of critical workers will attend face-to-face. -face. We will publish this list of areas today on the gov.uk website. I'd like to emphasise that this is being used only as a last resort. This is not all Tier 4 areas and that the majority, the overwhelming majority of primary schools will open as planned on Monday. The areas will also be reviewed regularly that so schools can reopen at the very earliest moment. Ongoing testing for primary school staff will follow later in January and we will be working to establish an ambitious testing programme helping to break chains of transmission and reducing the need for self-isolation where students and staff test negative for the virus. We have already announced our intention for a staggered return to education for this term for secondary age pupils and those in colleges. Because the COVID infection rate is particularly high among this age group, we are going to allow more time so that every school and college is able to fully roll out testing for all of its pupils and, uh, and staff. I would like to thank school leaders and staff for all of their ongoing work in preparing this. This kind of mass testing will help protect not just children and young people, it will benefit everyone in the community. It will break those chains of transmission. There's a making infection rates shoot up. This, in turn, will make it safer for more children to physically return to school. All pupils in exam years are to return during the week beginning the 11th of January, with all secondary school and college students returning full-time on the 18th of January. During the first week of term, on or after the 4th of January, secondary schools and colleges will prepare to test as many staff and students as possible and will only be open to vulnerable children and the children of key workers. The 1,500 military personnel committed to supporting schools and colleges will remain on task, providing virtual training and advice on establishing the testing process, with teams on standby to provide in-person support if required by schools. Testing will then begin the following week in earnest, with those who are in exam years at the head of the queue. This is in preparation for the full return of all pupils in all year groups on the 18th of January in most areas. To allow this focus on establishing testing throughout the first week of term, exam year groups will continue to have lessons remotely in line with what they would receive in class and only vulnerable children and children of critical workers will have face-to-face -face teaching. As with primary schools, we'll be applying our existing 
existing contingency framework for education in areas of the country with very high rates of COVID infection or transmission of the virus. This will require secondary schools and colleges to offer face-to-face -face education to only exam years, vulnerable children and children of critical workers with remote education being given to all of the students if they are in one of those contingency framework areas. We're also asking universities to reduce the number of students who return to campus at the start of January, prioritising students who require practical learning to gain their professional qualifications. All university students should be offered two rapid tests on return in order to reduce the chance of spread of COVID.